For our first reprise of this break, we invite you to listen or re-listen to episode six, White Fragility, Darvo, and Accepting Feedback. It's an important reminder for all of us that the work is ongoing and that the consequences of our actions, inactions, and reactions are real and powerful. This is Jews Talk Racial Justice with April and Tracy, a weekly show hosted by April Baskin and Tracy Guy Decker. In a complex world, change takes courage. Wholehearted relationships can keep us accountable. Hi, Tracy. How's it going? All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Life is full yeah. right now. Yeah. So I just um, I just finished reading White White Fragility, Robin D'Angelo, this past week. Um, I had I had read D'Angelo's work before in like smaller formats, articles and things. And I've heard her speak, but this is the first time I've, I've actually, I, I hadn't read the book until now. And um, there were a couple things that really struck me that I, I like, I wanted to share with you and get your take on it. So the first thing, the and first thing add? that, yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry to, and it, yes, that's right. Really and that's interesting because that's about, I am where you were before you read the book. Okay. So I think I, okay. I think I literally have the audio book queued up, but I, I also have 72 other <laughs> <laughs> titles in my audio. Okay, so you haven't read it yet. Yeah, I haven't read it yet, but I, ref, I refer to it. And I, I actually recommend it to you. So I, it's actually helpful to hear what, you, what you're thinking about, and it's more encouragement for me to read it. And I've read her articles, and I share, I share videos that she's done. So I'm, right. I'm excited to hear some of your thoughts, and it's, it will hopefully encourage me even further to actually read it. Well, I'll say it was, it's an easy read. I mean, it's, it's actually in some ways shorter than I expected. Um, like there's a nice. lot of resources at the back. Um, so the, it's a thin volume and it's actually even thinner in terms of the actual content. Um, and each chapter is, you know, quick and digestible. Um, and um, one of, so the first thing that struck me as I was reading and she's describing she, she's really trying to, or she goes through and, and, and categorizes and catalogs what happens when someone's fragility is triggered. So um, uh -huh. basically for, for, our, for our listeners and viewers, this is the idea that there is a predictable, uh, a predi predictable set of, of um, pattern. behaviors that when white people are confronted by um, racism, especially their own uh, expressions of racism, there's a predictable pattern of behaviors that acts to reinforce um, white supremacy. And um, though D'Angelo does, does not suggest that anyone is doing this sort of self-consciously, I think that's an important point, but- mm -hmm. Like on purpose. They're right. On purpose. They're not saying like, I'm going to reinforce white supremacy, by the way. They're just <laughs> reacting in what right. is natural, but it's the way that we, people with white skin have been taught to react. We've been taught to expect and feel entitled to comfort and, you know, just- in, entitled to like not be made uncomfortable. And so when we are made uncomfortable, we react in um, predictable ways. And so one of the first things that occurred to me is she doesn't use this, but um, I have a family member by marriage who was narcissistic and really an emotional abuser. And I didn't, mm -hmm. I was a kid when I was mainly being emotionally abused and I didn't, I didn't, call it that. I didn't recognize that in, until this person was more or less out of my life. But then I did a lot of reading about, especially about narcissistic abuse. And there's, a, there's a, an acronym that's used when talking about abusers, DARVO. Are you familiar with this? Oh yeah, I have. I, have, I, don't, rem I don't remember all of the words in the acronym, but I've heard so of DARVO. So it stands for before. deny, attack, reverse victim and oppressor, D-R-V-O. And you see it um, in... It, it, often in sexual abuse when it's accused or but any, anything. I mean, you can see it in politics. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I've seen I it didn't in do that. Spaces. And, and it happens in a lot of spaces, but this is sort of yeah. typical ab abuser reaction. Um, so, you know, I didn't do that. How dare you say that you're the one that's actually hurting me. Mm -hmm. um, and so D'Angelo doesn't, call out this acronym DARVO, but that's clearly one of one of the patterns that comes out with white fragility, you know, like Ooh, how you're saying this, that, right. <laughs> you know, it's, it, this, is a, this is hurtful. How dare you? You're the one that's racist because you're bringing up race. Um, mm -hmm. So that really struck me that it, it's a pattern 
it, 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 for me, it kind of corroborated what she was saying because that is a pattern that has been identified in other spaces of, of a power differential that, that, you know, and so that, so that really corroborated for me what she was laying out. And then the thing that has really stayed with me in her final chapter, um, which she calls where we go from here, she lays out a model of kind of working through fragility um, so that you are actually able to hear feedback and incorporate it. So she, she uses herself as a model throughout. But in this, in this last chapter, she talks about a case where she was meeting with a new, a new colleague, like a web developer or something, and she talks about what happens. And then she makes an offhanded remark about another colleague. So the web developer is Black American, and one of her other colleagues is also Black. And she makes an offhanded comment about her colleague's hair, natural hair, that she knows the colleague and maybe it was sort of within the bounds of their friendship, but she said it in front of this new person. And then mm-hmm. word gets back to her through her colleagues that that remark made the, the new colleague uncomfortable. And so she talks about what she does then once she hears this word. And she goes, first she talks to a white colleague who is also has anti-racist you know, goals to kind of process her feelings. And then she reaches out to the person who was, who was offended and says, are you willing to meet with me so that I can, uh, I don't remember if she used the word apologize, but to talk about my offhand, my unintended or offhanded racist remarks, something like that. And she says that that's an important step because she has to be willing to take no for an answer. The, the woman was willing to meet with her and they talked about it. And she said, I know that when I said this, it was inappropriate and I'm sorry. And the woman of color says more about why it felt inappropriate to her. And then D'Angelo says she did something. And this is the, all of this sounds like, I'm like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. And then the next thing that she, she does though, is the thing that I was like, wow, am I there yet? She said to her colleague, was there anything else that I missed that was inappropriate or that made you uncomfortable? And there was something. So then the colleague shares this other thing that D'Angelo had done, which she explains in the thing, but I'm not going to go into too much. And she says she, you know, it hurt and she worked through it. Like she didn't, she tried hard not to react. And then she apologized again and then said, is there anything else that needs to be said or heard before we can move on? And I was like, list, reading, I wasn't listening, reading this. I'm thinking, wow, that's mm-hmm. so grounded. Like the ability to take feedback around anything is mm-hmm. a skill that we don't always learn well. And because white people have been taught that we are entitled to comfort, like learning to take feedback around our own expressed racism, internalized racism is, can be particularly hard in that moment. Like I'm really sitting with that. Like that's clearly a goal and D'Angelo makes it clear how it can work. And now she and this colleague have a much deeper and more trusting relationship as a result. Mm-hmm. And even though I spend a lot of time thinking and talking about this, I think, would I be capable to have that, to go that extra step and say, what did I miss? And say, what else needs to be yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Talk talk about vulnerability. Like I'm, I'm, Mm -hmm. I know Brene Brown is, is talking and thinking about this right now. A little shout out to her, but I was, um, it left me feeling like, or reminding me that this is a journey that will never be over. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's, that's kind of where this, this book, um, like that final chapter of where we go really left me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what the woman said? Or is that something that we have as a teaser for people to actually go and read <laughs> white fragility in order to hear where, yeah. where the conversation went? So the final, so the thing that she had missed was D'Angelo had dismissed a survey that the colleague had written. Um, and the mm. colleague said, I spend my whole life justifying that I'm smart enough. And the, the way you glibly dismissed that survey, you know, kind of, it kind of hurt. And then the final thing the colleague said in t- terms of what else needs to be seen or heard, she said, um, if I have feedback for you in the future, would prefer, would you prefer that I give it 
privately or publicly. And D'Angelo said, because of Ooh. right. Um, uh-huh. Right. And D'Angelo said, because of what I do, I think you should give it publicly so that I may model hearing feedback. Which again, like really underscored, uh-huh. you know, how much further along in her journey she is in terms of being able to welcome that. And I, she's right. I mean, how can we get better if we can't hear where we're falling, you know, falling short and it, it feels like a risk and, right. and well, I'll, I'll let you. Oh, go ahead. No, finish your thought. Finish your thought. You just read this book. So you well, have this energy around it. Please, please finish. Well, I don't remember what I was going to say. The, 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 I say it feels like a risk. And then um, that risk was underscored again for me too. When, so I was, I was thinking about D'Angelo and I was thinking about all of the events of the past several weeks, months, I don't know. And I thought, I wonder what D'Angelo had to say about Amy Cooper. She was the, mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. woman who, um, who uh, attacked Christian Cooper verbally uh, in, in Central Park. By calling the police. Yeah, right. yeah. They're and erroneously and, calling the police. Right. And sort of telling him that that's what she was doing. Um, anyway, I, I was thinking, I wonder what Robin D'Angelo would have to say about that moment that we all saw on film on um, on video and so i i went onto twitter and i searched mm-hmm. d'angelo and um she's not on twitter anymore she had been um mm-hmm. but she has deleted her account and when i searched her you know her name as a hashtag or white fragility as a hashtag i see why she deleted her account like there's a lot of people who are real mad at her and so um mm-hmm. that just kind of underscored like the risk uh for me not that it's going to deter me but you know, it's real. I mean, the, the white, white, white supremacy is well guarded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and for me, what I, what I hold in that story is the experience of the black woman, right. And, and the courage it took and the strength and the clarity and the um, profound professionalism um, because in that moment, she also was being vulnerable in right. asking those questions. Because for us as Black women, like I appreciate that the Amy Cooper scene was recorded. Um, you know, whether it's or not, it's it's quite appropriate. So you know, but you know, like I, th- I kind of think of it in my head right now as a verb. You know, like is is somebody getting Amy Coopered right now? Um, which I don't, uh, you know, that doesn't fit overall with my values or anything. I don't want to, I don't want to be mean to this person. And in that, in that scene, you know, for, uh, for black people and, um, and for black women speaking from personal experience, like it wasn't clear in that moment, right? Like there's, I think for a number of the readers, there's a subtext of trust. That's not there for us as women of color. Like, like when she asked that question, it was in the context of relationship. But anytime we reach out our hand and ask a question like that, we don't know if, we're, if that's going to be the moment where more white fragility is going to show, show up and where we're going to get some kind of backlash or attack, right? And so in that conversation, I also just more viscerally than intellectually feel connected to that woman and, and also just relating around the choices I've made um, mostly to, to approach people privately. Um, most of the time, a number of the colleagues and leaders with whom I've worked occasion it's a, it's rare and special when I have someone in my life or in my career um, who is like you or who is functioning in the ways that Robin D'Angelo did, right? Most people have varying levels of white fragility. So, so um, it's just a ter- it just can be terrifying. It's, it's, it just takes a lot of, it takes a lot of courage on both sides for different reasons. It takes a lot of courage for white folks to confront white supremacy. Um, and it takes a lot of courage and hope or any number of resolve among people of color to, to decide, even though I'm actually saying the right thing, 
that, you know, God willing history will bear it out right now. I, I know I'm saying the right thing and I don't fully know in any given moment when I'm going to be lauded, when I'm going to be treated respectfully, when I'm going to be attacked, like, if, am I going to be praised and to the point of tokenization? And so um, just all around that conversation took immense courage and, and resolve and leaning in and vulnerability um, for all the parties involved. You were, you were going to say something. Well, D'Angelo says what you're saying um, about the, the courage and the fact that- Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, she she talked. She talks about one um, gentleman at a some sort of at some sort of training who she says, "What would it look like? What would the world look like if white people were able to just hear feedback um, and just say, thank you? I'll work on that.'" And she said his response was to sigh and say, "That would be revolutionary," and you know, yep. That's that's what you're saying, yeah. That, I mean, it would it would just it would change everything. Um, and what feels and, so raw and potent about this moment is that I think we're not there yet, but this moment I, I think is moving us is moving more people closer to that. Right, and I that's wanna, why this moment is so pregnant with opportunity. Yeah, go ahead. It is, it is, and I want to just call out you just praise me and I thank you for saying you know there are people like me are rare. And I just, I don't want to exempt myself though. Right. I don't want to yeah. like, I, I didn't say you were perfect, but I said, no, <laughs> but you are fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I'm um, not perfect and either. I just, and none of us are. And I just want to, I feel like there's a lot of times, especially when I talk to other white folks That's who true. care about racism, where we tend to set things up um, in a way where we're talking about us, them within the white community or within mm-hmm. white people. And we think of ourselves right. as the good guys and those other, and I think that actually, that when binary we, isn't helpful. It's not helpful, and I think it it's it's beyond not helpful. I think it actually hurts us when we think of racism as something that bad people do. Um, mm-hmm. Then that makes it even harder. That makes the white fragility even more, it, it, even more likely. Because if you say, "Well, Tracy, that thing you just said was racist," then I'm like, "But I'm not a bad person." Right. And then, and then right. I fall into my Darvo and, you know, and I'm and I, it, unable to hear that, um, unable to hear the feedback, which is that that thing you just said was informed by all of the racism that we've all been eating, drink, drinking, sleeping, um, breathing forever. Um, and so mm-hmm. I, I, I want to thank you and I value, you know, our relationship and I do work to work through my white right. fragility. That doesn't mean you're perfect, right? And both but that of doesn't mean I don't have it. Right, right, right. Of course, of course. And I think, you know, that's all we could, we can, um, that's a whole episode in and of itself that I was right. just thinking about earlier today about this whole thing of like, who's racist and who isn't and where is it and where is it not? Um, and like, and though, like everything you said is true and it matters to me that you have an explicitly more multicultural mindset and that you are able to hear things in my conversations with you when I'm saying the same thing to everyone and we're able to go deeper because you're able to process and hold more and that matters. And it does make a, a, a real difference in my experience of feeling safe with you, a feeling profound kavod, feeling like I am respected and honored and that I do my best to extend that back to you. Um, and while also knowing that none of us are perfect, like right. my right. ideal relationship um, with white folks um, is not when they're perfect. It's that I know that we have a shared commitment to equity and justice and that we have a good pattern of communication such that when things do arise, they don't operate with as much white fragility and we're actually able to navigate it. And my part of that is that I know that I also come to the table being open and actually receptive to receiving meaningful critical feedback. And the tricky dance that I need to navigate within that is is at times is me sussing out what's legitimate and what's legitimate that's also tinged with racial bias and what to me is just straight up um, 
not actually helpful feedback. Um, right. But although usually in the context of those more special trusting relationships I have, that's not as much of an issue. So I think this is probably a good place to end the session for now. Um, I think in terms of action items for folks, if people are looking to engage more, um, we would love for you to do at least two things. Maybe Tracy wants to add some things to the list. One is to we can I speak <laughs> read White Fragility okay. by Robin D'Angelo. Um, I love her leadership and I've read excerpts and read enough of her material that I've recommended it, even though I haven't actually read it, but I need to. It's on my list. Um, so I would encourage you to read it. And then also if you um, have questions or ideas, feel free to comment, um, whether it's on our YouTube video or um, on the various places that our podcast lives. Um, comment and let us know how you are engaging with these questions in your own life. And if you have these ideas and concepts and values. Um, and finally, if you have questions for us, then hit us up um, on our website. And Great. I think that's it for that's now. Great. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm, well, I guess I will add just one thing. One thing. Yes, if please, you are listening please. and you are, and you have white skin like I do, then I think that model that D'Angelo gave is, um, is a good one. And think about who your accountability partner is, the white person that you can go to and sort of talk about things and process before you go to the person of color. Um, and it needs to be someone who will hold you accountable, not someone who will say, oh, she's overreacting. Um, so think about who that person is um, that you can use as your kind of processing partner. Um, I think that is an important thing that you can do right now. Thanks for tuning in. Our show's theme music was composed by Elliot Hammer. You can find this track and other beats on Instagram at Elliot Hammer. If this episode resonated with you, please share it and subscribe. To join the conversation, visit JewsTalkRacialJustice.com, where you can send us a question or suggestion, access our show notes, and learn more about our team. Take care until next time and stay humble and keep going.